I want to welcome all of His Glory Ministry from east to west to north to south. We bring you the word of His Glory for today. Today is 3 2 17, uh, the fourth of Adar, uh, Adar on the uh, Hebrew calendar, 5,777. We're bringing you to this live on Facebook Live and Periscope. So I par- uh, apologize for the little bit of delay on both of these live broadcasts going off at the same time. We're getting so many requests to go on multiple platforms. Uh, that we're trying to do as much as we possibly can at once. So uh, help us uh, through this. Uh, Before we get into the word of the Lord, uh, we we ask that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to teach us the true word of God, which is only taught by the Holy Spirit and through the living word, which is Christ our Lord and our Savior. Today's message is going to be from Matthew uh, 5, 14 and 20. We're going to talk about how literally Christ talks about his word being truth how he's going to fulfill it to the, uh, to the yacht and tittle, uh, exactly for the, uh, from the book of Matthew. Again, as we've done our teaching, this is Matthew of the Gospel. There's four Gospels, as we've said. You can get all of our four Gospel teachings on our website, uh, www.hisglory.tv, under John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Each one of the Gospels bring a different perspective of the Christ. Mark is showing the servitude of the Christ, being the servant of the Most High, being the humble servant. That's why there is no genealogy. We see in the book of Matthew, it shows the Jewishness, and there's the genealogy to Father Abraham, and where the spirituality starts with Abraham coming in to, to get the, the Abrahamic covenant uh, to uh, Isaac and Jacob uh, everlasting. And we see the book of Luke, it shows the, the, the manhood, that he goes all the way back to the genealogy of Adam. So Dr. Luke was a Gentile. He's showing us the, 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 the manness of, 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 of Christ being half man and half son of God and half God in the flesh. And John, that's the purpose of John. John does, uh, gives a, a genealogy of the Trinity, talking about the word was with God, the word was God, and the word was in the beginning. So showing that Jesus Christ, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit were the Word before the world was begun. And, J- and John goes on to say that the Word became flesh. So the, po- the book of John is showing the deity of Jesus Christ. Not only the Son of God, but unequivocally showing you that He is God and the second head. As Thomas says, when Jesus came up to, to uh, Thomas, when D- Thomas doubted, and he said, put your fingers in my side. And he said, my kairos in the Greek, meaning my Lord, meaning the highest level you could possibly be. But his next words were, my theos. Thomas called him God in the Gospel of John. There are seven I am statements. Seven is the number of of completion in the Bible. And I am is showing you that I am am in the the, the one from the, the burning bush. I am that I am, the name of the Most High God, Elohim. And he said, before Abraham, I am. And it got the Pharisees and the Sadducees ready to stone him. Why were they going to stone him? That's why they put Jesus on the cross. Because he declared seven times that he is, I am. He, is, he, he just said, I was before Abraham. How can you be not even 50 years old be, uh, before our father Abraham? Because he was declaring that he was not just the son of God, he was God. And he was at the burning bush. That's why the seven I am statements of the book of John. So verse 14, we're going to get into what Jesus says. This is the call. This is a call of the world, what we're supposed to do in love of Christ. This is what separates a religion from a relationship. We're taught by the Lord Most High to be a light, a beacon of hope, that beacon. And we'll go through the scripture and we'll explain what the difference is between a relationship and a, and a religion. Very important. If you're in a religion of Christianity, you're doing it wrong. We don't want to be in a religion. A religion has rules. Religion has restrictions. There, yes, there are, there's, there's, guide, there's, there's precepts and commandments that the Lord gives us in, in, in His Word, but that we follow those because we're servants. We follow those because of our love for Him that compels us to do that. So it's a love relationship. It's not a religion with rules that you have to do this. And Jesus sums up the two greatest commandments when He was asked, love the Lord your Elohim in the Hebrew, which means three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Again, in Hebrew, Elohim can only mean three in the Torah. It, it cannot mean two, cannot mean four, it's three. That's why you see in the English version of your Bible in Genesis, God created man in our image. And somebody that's really starting to study the Bible, first they scratch their head and say, well, well why is it plural? It's because they're taking the plural Elohim. Elohim is more than one, that's three. And we showed you in, 
in Genesis 5, the amazing, amazing, amazing uh, nugget in the Hebrew on how God showed that he would bring his son and die uh, to give uh, everlasting life and he would raise again. So that's the difference between a love. And he said the second is love your neighbor as yourself, meaning love your enemy even. And that's what a love relationship with Jesus Christ. We don't force this on anybody. We pray for our brothers and sisters of other religions or those who are not believers of Jesus Christ. That's why we need to be a light to the rest of the world. We can't be a church of hypocrites. We can't be talking one way and walking another. Jesus calls us to be pure through him, and the only purity we can get is through the blood of Christ. And walking in that light that the world sees this light and has gravitated this light and say they're different. I can't tell you how many times that Muslims come to his glory ministry and they'll ask a question about Jesus. They're peculiar about Jesus because they know Jesus is in the Quran and they, know, and they, they, they look at Jesus as a prophet according to the Quran. Again, as, as I've said many times, the Lord put it on my heart to really study the Quran inside out, upside down, so that I would be able to show the differences between the Quran the Gospels, and the Torah, and the Tanakh, uh, between Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Why do they all have the same characters or the same people throughout them? One of them is not right, and one of them, and, and some of them are not wrong, or some of them are wrong. So how do we know? The central character to all this is Jesus Christ. Who is he? According to Islam, he's a prophet. According to Christianity, he is the way, the truth, and the life, and the only way to heaven. So by knowing the Quran, I can share that. And they're always asking me to, to, to um, tell me who the Christ is and show me in, through the Quran who this person could be, that he's more than a prophet. And I give them that. I give them the seed. That's what Jesus tells us to do. Plant the seed. I'm not trying to force anything. They came to me and asked me a question because they're, they're questioning their tradition. They're questioning their religion, saying, I, I'm hearing more about this Jesus character. I'm also hearing that we're supposed to kill the infidel. We, we, we hate it. We're supposed to hate the Jews and the Christians. And what blows these people away, most of them are millennials, and that's why they're challenging the status quo. They're challenging what the tradition of, 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 of their families have been for years and years and years. They want to know who Jesus is overwhelming question that comes into me from Muslim countries is who is Jesus? Now some of them opens up their heart and they look and they expand and they've taken Christ in to become their Lord and Savior. Some of them are hardened in their heart and they say, no, 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 they're not quite ready yet. And I don't push it on them. And what blows the Muslim people away is the love, is the love that I love you. I love you as a Muslim. I love you as a Hindu. I love you as an atheist. God tells us through Jesus Christ to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We pray for our brothers and sisters that do not know the Lord. We pray that they become children of the Most High God. There's two differences that we've taught in our teachings. One, we are all a creation of the one God in the Hebrew. So if you're following Islam in the Torah, as Muhammad said in the beginning, it was in Hebrew, and that Hebrew name for God is Elohim. That's three. So that's the first flag that goes up because the Torah teaches, or the Quran teaches that the Torah is a holy book. And so that's what it tells us. Honor the, uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your, your soul, and your mind. And that's what we have to seek the Lord. And that we do that through love. We do, do that through showing them and teaching them. And what they're coming in and finding is that if they don't agree with, so they, they, they still agree with what they've been taught, we don't force it on them, and we love them. And we say, we love all Muslims. We love you. We pray that you're going to find it. And until then, we can still have dialogue. We still can be friends. We can still uh, interact. I have no hatred toward you. I'm not called to, to, to do any type of infidel. I'm called to love you. And I pray for you, and we can have a relationship. And they're so blown away. I've had many imams come in and try to do dialogue with me and talk to me about the, the, um, uh, the cr Christianity and versus uh, what the Quran says and the Bible says. And, you know, they're pretty, pretty well set in their ways. But uh, they, they, come and they, have, they come and say, hey, you know what? That was a, that was a very good dialogue that we had. We came and we, we, we did it as love, even though we, we worship a different God. And we, we do obviously don't accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. But I am very surprised that a Christian will treat us with that type of kindness and love. Well, that shouldn't be a surprise. That is what the church is supposed to be, as Jesus says in Matthew 5, 14 through 20. That's what we're going to talk about today. We need to be the light of the world, and that light of the world has to start with love. Everything is wrapped up in love. Take the 66 books of Word of God. What is it called? Love. 
God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that he who that believeth in him, not English believe, that means change the heart and committed oneself to will have everlasting life. Shall never perish and have everlasting life. And that is through the Son, Jesus Christ. Praise his name. So Matthew 5.14, you are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hidden. He says, you're the light. Don't hide it. Be, if you're a Christian, walk in the glory of the Lord, not your glory, his glory, the glory of the cross behind me, the glory of him. We're called to be servants and be that light. Don't be a hypocrite. Love and show that true fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22, that everyone around you, you show the love. And they say, that's different. I'm, that is not what I was taught in, in, in my religion about what Christians are or Jews are. That's different. They're showing me love, even though I don't agree with them. They're showing me love, and that's what we're supposed to do. We pray that they will know the truth at the end. Until then, we, we pray for them, and we lift them up in love, and we do not hate anyone. We're not called to have hatred in our heart because, as Jesus says, if we cannot forgive, how can, how can, how can God the Father forgive us of our mighty sins? We are no better than a Muslim. We are no better than a Hindu or an a atheist or anything. It has nothing to do with good or bad. It has to do with the condition of love. Loving the one who gives you eternal life because he shed his life for us. So do they, do, do, do they light a lamp and put it under a basket? Put it on a lampstand and give it light to all who are in the house. He says, if you have a light, you're not going to put it under your desk. You're going to put it on the lampstand. You're just so all can see the, the light, the light of the glory of God. Let your light shine so before man that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. It's not the good works that we are doing in the flesh. It's the good works that the Lord says are righteous because of our love for him that compels us. It's our love for him that compels us. And as it, as it says to Abraham, Abraham was accredited as righteous as his faith. But before Abraham could have faith, he loved Elohim. He loved him. He loved him, he trusted him, he knew that he could count on the word of God to be truth. Therefore, he had faith. And that faith was only counted as a good, a good thing and righteous. Remember, Jesus asked, good teacher, he said, who's good? Only your father in heaven is good. Because at that point in time, Jesus had not gone to the cross yet. So only the father in heaven at that particular time in the Holy Spirit was good. So he's saying, we are not doing it in our good self. We're only doing it by the cleansingness of the grace of Christ through us. Do not think that I came to this. This is very important here. This is Jesus Christ for all those liberal churches out there that say God's word is an allegory and that God's word is outdated. And uh, we believe in replacement theology. The church has replaced Israel. And therefore, this is an allegory. And this is, not, this is a figure of speech. And this is not true. And this is not ancient. Yada, 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 yada. All you hear this liberal. This is from the author of the word himself telling you exactly how he reads the Bible. Remember, in the Old Testament, the New Testament was concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Every time in the, Old, in the New Testament, a, 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 a speaker of the Old Testament, or in the New Testament, Quoting the Old Testament, speaks, he quotes it word for word. Jesus quoted Deuteronomy, Isaiah, Daniel, uh, Jonah, word for word. But Jesus, the author of the word himself, is going to give us a very valuable lesson in 5, 17, and 18. This is extremely important to know. Do not think I came to destroy the law or the prophets, meaning destroy the Torah and the Tanakh. I didn't come to destroy the holy books of God. I did not to destroy them but to fulfill them. So that means God, Tanakh, and Torah are living today. As the rabbis will tell you, the Torah is a living document. As uh, we mentioned many times before, the, the Jewish people, and that's why God's word is so accurate. We know that from the Dead Sea Scrolls. There, the, the book of Isaiah was found in its totality. 99% the way our book of Isaiah reads today. The reason I say it's 99% because you have some, some translational issues between the Hebrew scroll and the English but it's word for word of what the Lord was from the, the, the original scroll. And what they used to do is they would have two witnesses and one person that would take a, 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 a mechanism and they would retrace the scrolls because the ink would, would go off uh, and keep them always updated. So for, they made a mistake. They, two witnesses were changing it as it is in the word of God. Uh, two witnesses, my word is established. And it's literal. So that when they're going through and changing it, they miss, they, they put God out of a comma. Even if it was out of a comma, exactly what Jesus is going to say, they had to take the whole scroll and wrap it up and bury it because it's a living document. That's what the rabbis do. And that's what Jesus is telling us. 
take it as a living, breathing document. Because he says, I didn't come to destroy the law and the prophets, meaning the Torah and the Tanakh, I, to come, but to fulfill it, meaning fulfill it to every yacht and tittle. Do not think I came to destroy. Uh, verse 18, for surely I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, we know that heaven and earth will pass away at what? After the millennial reign of Jesus Christ and the white throne judgment, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. So it will pass away. And, but I, what he's saying is all my prophecy and all the words of the Torah and the Tanakh will come, come together perfectly before God ushers in us the tabernacle in eternity with him. He says, before it passes away, um, one yacht or one tittle will by no means pass from the law to, to, to all is fulfilled. So yacht and tittle is like a comma or the smallest blemish on the Hebrew, just a very small blemish on the paper. So he's telling you, in the English vocabulary, dot the I, cross the T. Literally, the spaces between the scrolls and letters, Jesus is explaining what they are. And that's what he's saying. My, take my word literally, even to the comma, as we know that Jesus spoke in the Gospels, that he, he quoted the, the prophet Isaiah, and literally stopped at a comma in there in, in, when he was speaking in the, in, in the Holy Temple. So he's saying... In verse 19, whoever therefore breaks one least of these commandments and teaches men to do so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be great in the kingdom of heaven. That's a real big warning for all those pastors out there. Anybody who is called to be an ambassador of his glory, anyone is called to be an ambassador of the most high God, he says, teaches men the wrong thing, man and woman the wrong thing, or heaven help you if you teach the child a wrong thing. There is going to be, there is, they're going to be least in the kingdom of heaven, and worst if they're doing it in iniquity, that would be worse for them than Sodom and Gomorrah. But whoever does and teaches them and shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven, whoever teaches them God's holy word, through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit saying that it's literally exactly the way Jesus said, the, cross, the, the dot, the I, the cross, the T in the English, the, every yacht and tittle, meaning it is perfect. So whoever is teaching the word of God from perfection will, will inherit heaven. So when you are a called to be an ambassador of the Most High God, there's, there's, there's a spiritual, uh, uh, it takes it up a huge notch. You have to represent God's word from your heart, your soul, and then your mind. It's got to be his spirit based on his word because you're going to be held accountable to that because there are people going to listen to what you say. That's why Jesus tells us not to listen to man. Listen to the word of God. We tell you in our teaching at His Glory Ministry, it's the infallible literal world of God. And we go by Acts 17, 11. No matter what we say, it needs to be backed by Scripture. And it has to be two or three witnesses my word is established. Check the Scriptures daily. That's what Paul was saying. The Bereans were much, in Acts 17, 11, Bereans were much more noble than the Thessalonians because they listened to this, what Paul was saying with an open heart. However, they checked the Scriptures daily to make sure what Paul was saying is truth. The world needs truth. The world doesn't need somebody to get up there and say X, Y, Z for my own personal or say that it's okay to do this now in today's society. God's word never changes. And the, and the, and the pulpits of, of the world need to stand up in the truth. And the only truth is Jesus Christ. And the truth is what he says. I will fulfill it to every yacht and tittle. And be that light out of love until the whole world. As Jesus said before he went up to sit at the right hand of the Father. Go preach the gospel from east to west to north to south to every creature. We know Bible prophecy is being fulfilled this very day. This broadcast on Periscope, which will be on his uh, Facebook, YouTube, our website, and all our other platforms, is literally hitting every single country in the world, fulfilling Jesus' prophecy that the gospel will be spoken throughout the world. And what is the gospel? It, even in the Quran, as I mentioned before, the gospel is considered a holy book. But what does gospel mean? The gospel is described to us by the Apostle Paul. The gospel means, and I quote, that Jesus, according to the scriptures, according to the Tanakh and the Torah, meaning the Old Testament prophets and the Torah, meaning Moses through God, Elohim, that Jesus would die for our sins, past, present, and future. He would go into the belly of the earth, and we see in, in Paul's teaching, even into Sheol, 
and brings the, the New Testament or the Old Testament saints to the third heaven. And then on the third day, according to the scriptures, meaning it was written in the Tanakh and the Torah that he would rise again, and he did to sit on the right hand of the Father, and he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is our high priest until he comes back again. That is what the gospel literally means. So he is the risen Christ. He is the Son of God, and he is God in the second head. And he calls us to love. And everything we do in, in, in a relationship with Jesus Christ is all wrapped in love. And Jesus says, all the law and the prophets, meaning the Torah and the Tanakh, the Old Testament for us Christians, is all wrapped in love. Everything God does is love. There's over 365 uh, references to love in the Old Testament alone. It's telling us there's enough love from God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit to for every single day of the year, plus, because there's only 360 days on the Hebrew calendar. It's 365 on the, in, the, in the Gregorian or the, or the Western calendar. In, the, in, the, in the, the Quran, I see the word love twice. And it's in reference is to jihad. And we, don't have, we don't have that there. We have Christ telling us love. Take the other cheek. Love your neighbor. Love your enemy. Pray for them. And we'll bring them in as a light of love, that hope to the world that we are different. We walk differently, not because we're better than anybody else. We're not better than anybody else. In some cases, we probably have sinned more than others of, of atheists or of uh, other religions. But the only difference is We've humbled our heart and said, God, Jesus, take, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior in my heart. Take the sins away, and you are my Lord and Savior. And I repent of my sins, and I trust you, and I'll walk with you. And if you pray that prayer, you'll have everlasting love with Christ, eternity. Because even scientists tell us today, scientists, even scientists who are atheists, there was a, there was a PhD professor out of Rutgers just recently, there was a division between two competing scientific groups about the Big Bang Theory, and they couldn't get these two groups together. So they took this well-renowned PhD professor from Rutgers, and they asked him, can you, well, they put millions of dollars into this research document, can you bridge these two different gaps uh, between the two different camps of the Big Bang Theory? And so after months and millions of dollars, he came up to, and this is an atheist, the atheist scientist that says this, and you can Google this and find this, this, this white paper. He said, there's two unequivocal things that we can tell you from science itself. This is science. One, there is a creator. Somebody created this. As Bill Gates used to say, there has to be a creator of the software. The software just doesn't start all by itself. You have to, you have to uh, uh, create software. Somebody has to manipulate the software. And the second thing he said is the soul and spirit live on forever. When the, the, the body perishes, the soul and spirit from a scientific perspective live on forever. The question that each and every one of you all over his glory nation have to ask yourself today, if I die today based on science, my soul and spirit's going to live, but where will it live? Will it live in eternity and love through Jesus Christ and have that glowing light forever by accepting Jesus Christ in my heart as my Lord and Savior? Or will I be anywhere else except anything else, any other religion, or except nothing, or the world, or anything? That will be part of the white throne judgment, and you've denied the Lord. And you yourself have taken your name out of the Lamb's book of life. We pray and love for each and every one of you that do not know the living Christ, that you ask him to come into your heart. And if you're not sure of him, ask for, for, ask for him to reveal himself to you. Jesus Christ is revealing himself to Muslims all over the world, Hindus, uh, Buddhists, all, atheists. When they're asking, show yourself to me, there's signs and wonders like no time in the history of the world, and they're coming, and they're visions, and they're dreams, and they're coming. And many are coming to know the Lord High Almighty. We pray that the light of Jesus Christ, the word for today, is a light for you. That you may seek truth in your heart and ask, accept, ask, who is this Christ? And once you've found him, to accept him into your life and let him take control. We pray that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob blesses you to next time. God bless you.